and zero in the UFC. Smashes everybody. Everybody's scared of him. Nobody calls him out. I don't think. Yeah, Till. I'm pretty sure Till will be scared of him. He'd love it, Till, wouldn't he? He loves it. Yeah. Yeah. Till. The Tills. <laughs> they've been going back and forth. Yeah, I think Till's the it. guy for him. It's yeah, a, definitely. What fight I'll be. And the stand-up wise, Till has a massive advantage. And then on the ground, Usman should have an advantage. Yeah. So it's it's a very interesting yeah, fight. Yeah, interesting fight. Usman's a fucking tank too. That guy's. Fucking I'm animal, not, not man. Well, yeah, I've not seen too much of him, but um, it's because everybody's scared of him. They <laughs> can't get fights. Well, that there you go. Usman is a fucking stud. I mean, that guy is no joke. He he like. There's very few people calling that guy out. Yeah, but Till will be loving that. Oh yeah, yeah. Till's the one that's that, calling him yeah, out. Yeah, there you go. That he thrives on stuff yeah. like that. I've known Darren since he were 16 years old, and um, we used to we used to train together like Muay Thai back in there. Used to come over to my gym, bad company with his coach and we used to work together and I'd pad the work him and do bits with him. And he's always had that attitude and um, never been scared of anyone. Always have been like, yeah, whatever, bring it on, bring it on. I he, believe him. there hasn't been a single guy in the UFC with one fight that's got as much hype as that guy. You know, one fight fights Cowboys, smashes yeah. him. I mean, you see what he did to Cowboys. Yeah, Cowboys well, everyone knew then he's the real, the real deal as he's well. He's always then. been special. He's one of these kids, like when I seen him growing up, he's one of these kids that just come to, and he's special. And I mean... The city's behind him, everyone, because he comes to our gym where I train Four Corners Gym with John Gillies and uh, Barley and all them and Mick and Alan. And he, he, he comes down there, sticks his head in, but he doesn't train. But I've trained there, but he, he comes and sees us and he's a great guy. But his coach, Colin Heron, I grew up with kind of because I was trained with a Thai called Master Scan and we used to do demos and stuff because, believe it or not, I used to be all right. And uh, but Colin was always a little bit better. And since then, he's got Carbon, Carbon Gym, and he, he's had UFC fighters from Liverpool. But he's, now he's got this star in Darren, and the whole city is—he he, he gets, he gets a bit like him in Leeds. They just get swamped by people. Now, was this pictures, when Darren was fighting Muay Thai that he yeah. became popular? Yeah, yeah. Well, when he fought Muay yeah. Thai, didn't he? He were, he were always like one of the most naturally talented kids you would ever see. He's with Simon Audley, then a different. Coach. Yeah, he used to come down to our gym, and he'd have a fight coming up, and. Um, he would just be wiping the floor with everyone. He didn't even really train hard back then either. He used to come down, he was a young kid, he'd mess around, he'd run, run riot and didn't really hardly train, but still turn up, fight and win. Since then, someone with that natural talent, he's now got that dedication, that hard work. So someone who's that naturally talented and who's going to work that hard, that's going to be a force and to be And a southpaw. Yeah, yeah, force to be reckoned with. When he stepped in and caught Cowboy with that left elbow, did yeah. you see that fight yeah. when he stepped in and just tank, just yeah. drove up that elbow and smashed Cowboy's nose? You're like, wow, that was fast. He cuts Dinston so quick yeah. as well. Well, Colin, his trainer, he, he was a, he, he trained Mudaquan, Mudaquan, is it? Taekwondo? Mudaquan, yeah. Yeah, he was like black belt at 11 or something mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, he's just, Colin takes no bullshit, you know? Uh, Colin just says, that's the way it is, a bit like Richard. That's the way it is, that's what you got to do, that's what you're doing. And since that, since Darren's had that, influence in his life like Liam said and obviously the story about him going Brazil he's just uh, just been another level what makes a guy naturally talented like you take a guy like Darren Till like when you say naturally talented like what is about a guy like that that just picks things up quicker I don't know it's it's hard to explain some people just walk into a bad company gym and they'll have two free lessons and they'll just be able to they'll have that flow the movement the rhythm and stuff like that Darren were like that ever since I remember when he first started I remember his coach saying I've got this kid you need to see him you need to come and look at him southpaw you should see him kick he's only been training in a few months and I, when I saw him I was like he looks like he's a seasoned pro five six years of training we've had plenty of like that walking Naji at Bad Company and they'll come in they'll have a few fights and they're like oh it's alright this but as soon as it gets hard and the level steps up and they realise how hard they have to work to actually compete at that level, that's the end of them. You don't really see them anymore. And it's like the biggest waste of talent you've ever seen. We've had plenty like that walk through our gym. Yeah. It's not many. Talent's like, not enough. No, no not, not, not when you get no, to that level. Now. It is to a, a certain level when you can right. get yourself out of jail, but when the level yeah. steps up and everyone's working hard and people who are as talented as you are working hard, then that's when you're going to be in trouble. That's why Darren's gone off and done what he's done. That's why and shown what he's all about. There's this ki uh, class, my, my youngest daughter, she's seven. She takes uh, martial arts, takes this mixed martial arts class. There's this five-year-old in this class, and they're doing drills in the bag, and I'm watching this five-year-old kick the bag. He's got his hands up high. He's moving like this. Da -da, bang! turns the hip over perfect even a switch kick and I'm watching this five-year-old and I went over to his parents and I went if I was a strike if I was like a, 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 a coach that was looking to recruit a fighter at a young age I would grab that fucking kid like that kid's special like there's something that he figured out at five 
At five, all the other kids, you're looking at all the other kids in the class, they're flailing their arms all over the place. <laughs> Not they're, paying they're attention. They're kicking yeah. up. They're barely. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking kid is like this. His hands are glued right below his eyes, like bang, bang, crack, bang, bang, crack. Well, at I, five. Our kids' class at Bad Company, I don't like training upstairs at the same time when they're on because all the technique is so good. It's embarrassing sometimes. You look at them all and you think, like, from six to 12. These are amazing, but like I say, it's only the ones that really want it, who are really willing to put the yeah. hard work in, who will go from the next level and the next level and the next level. Because a lot drop off, no matter how talented they are. Not a lot of people like having to go to that place where you need to go right. to get to a good level. Yeah, he doesn't like people watching him when he can't do things well either. Mm. Like when he's learning things, he likes to go over in the corner and practice things on his own. It's like very interesting yeah. when you watch like someone who's just got like a special inclination towards something. There's a kid called Shay Williams from... Uh 